not to be crucified as his followers, they would be seen as rebels, and the same thing was going to happen to them, and so they're hiding behind these doors. We see the same thing the next week, even after they see Jesus. Jesus appears to them. They know Jesus is resurrected, but there's still this fear in him because he appears to them the next week in that same room behind those same closed doors. But something happens. Over the next 40 days, they're having conversations with Jesus, Luke would tell us. He tells us that Jesus was expounding to them, explaining to them the prophets and the law and how he was the fulfillment of those things. But then we find the beginning of Acts, after he's resurrected, we find them doing the same thing. They go back into that room, they're hiding in that room, having their conversations about who they are and what they're going to do. But then on the 50th day after Jesus was resurrected, on the day of Pentecost, it says that the Holy Spirit came in and that it landed on them like uh, tongues of fire that landed upon them. And they became completely different people. We find in that moment that they start talking and that this rushing wind invites everyone who's in Jerusalem to come hear them. And Peter doesn't lock the doors and hide away. Peter stands up and Peter preaches a fiery sermon on who Jesus is. Because the Holy Spirit changed him from a feared man, uh, to, from a, an afraid man, to a man who was fearless. We find going on forward from that, we find that they would be persecuted, that they would be taken in, that they would be beaten. And when they are beaten, that they would say, well, you have to find it within you if you think it's more important for me to obey you, or the laws of men, or the laws of God. That they beat them again and they let them go, and it says that they went away there rejoicing, counting that they were worthy, worthy to suffer for the name of Christ. The Holy Spirit changed them. It does to us today. Now, maybe not in the same way. We don't have tongues of fire that come down upon us the way they did then to declare that God was with them. But the Scriptures tell us in Acts 2 and 38 that in baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, or the gift which is the Holy Spirit. And that that Holy Spirit helps us to grow, to become the fearful child, a babe in Christ, to grow into this fearless Christian who follows him no matter what. That when the times are good, we're fearless. And when the times are bad, we're fearless. When it looks like everything is against us, we know God is for us. So it doesn't matter. That when it looks like everything else is going against us, when nothing is going our way, we know that this is but a temporary trial on this life. Paul would describe his own life of all the sufferings, the beatings, the being shipwrecked, the being thrown into jail, and he would say, even the cares of the church that fall upon me daily, and then he would follow that to say, but this is but a light affliction compared to the eternal weight of glory. He says that we don't look at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen. Because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are eternal. And that's what Paul James is saying here, what Paul is saying in Romans, is when we see the things that are here are temporary, and we truly see the things that aren't seen are eternal, and our eyes are on the things that are not seen, the sufferings here become a lot less. It's not that the sufferings get any less, but the sufferings appear a lot less to us. Our mindset on those sufferings changes because we know they have to come to an end because Jesus is coming at some point. We know they have to, to, uh, to fi be finalized because Jesus is coming. We know they can't last forever because Jesus is coming to take us home. And knowing that they can't last forever helps carry us through. That's why Paul says that it builds in us this endurance. That we know we can outlast it because our God is with us. And in doing that, that we build a steadfastness in us. And that in us builds hope. That when we overcome it, when we know we can get through it, because we have a hope, right? It's the hope that pushes us through. We have a hope that something else better awaits us on the other side. And he says, and that hope will not fail us. Because that hope is what carries us through the storms of life. That hope is what carries us through the trials. That hope is what carries us through when our children are making the right decisions. It carries us through when our family members have turned against us. It carries us through when people aren't treating us the way they should. We know that Jesus is coming again. And he's going to carry us through. And it's that hope that builds in us that grows in us, 
and turns us into the fearless people that God intends for His people to be. We need to have that hope. We need to not lose that hope. And in this world, it's easy to lose that hope. It's easy to get knocked down and beat down. Peter would say, the people around you will tell you, it's been a long time since you've actually seen God, right? There's no God. Everything is the same since it's always been. And James says, that's because our God is long-suffering, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should come to know the Lord. So we have hope that our suffering will lead others to Christ as well. That in them seeing the hope that's in us, and them seeing the joy that James talks about in our suffering and our trials, that they wonder how you can have joy when everything around you is crashing down. Everybody else is falling apart, and yet you just keep trudging through. You keep pushing forward. You keep praising your God. I want to know about you. I want to know how you can do that. I want to know about the God that allows you to do that. And you get to show the fearlessness of Peter and James and John and Paul and the apostles in that moment because you get to tell the reason, that joy of the hope that lies in you to somebody else. As one person put it, you get to be the beggar showing another beggar where to find bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Hey, you just sit down somewhere. I'm getting this prayer stick with us. He's already in the circle. Our Almighty God, we come before you because you are the way maker. That in the trials and sufferings of this life, we know that you will make a way out of it. For you tell us that all things work together for good to those who love you, those who are called according to your purpose. And Lord, we are your people, and we are called according to your purpose, and so we know that you will make a way no matter how dark the road ahead may seem. We know that there is light, and we have hope in that light. For we know that your light has overcome the darkness, that the darkness could not comprehend, the darkness could not overcome the light of Jesus Christ. And because that light overcame the darkness, we know that we shall overcome the darkness through him. And so, Lord, we pray today that whatever darkness lies in the paths of the people here, we pray that your light would overcome it for them. And we pray that they would have the hope and the knowledge yeah. that you can overcome it yeah. and that you will overcome it yeah. and that we will continue steadfastly in your way until yeah. you overcome it. Yeah. For you are the one, the way, All the truth, the and the light. Yeah. Help us, Lord, to believe this in all yeah. our ways and all our days. Yeah. And help us to show it to others that they may know it and they may come to follow yeah. that same path yeah. that leads to the light of heaven, yeah. that leads to eternity, yeah. that leads to the eternal weight of glory, the things that are not yeah. seen, instead of dwelling on the problems of the things that are seen. Yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, to live like that. We thank you for the spirit that dwells in us that allows us to do that. We thank you for the spirit that works in us, Lord, and we pray that we would be led by that spirit to that way instead of being led by our own fears into the darkness. Let us be led by the spirit into the glorious light so that one day we may dwell with you, light and love in eternity. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.